Hey, what's up guys? John here. Mortgage rates are skyrocketing and most borrowers are now forced to borrow money in the mid to high sixes and in many cases now even the 7% range. Take a look at this. So as of right now, the average American has a credit score of 698. 698. And this here, I'm going to refresh the tab so you can see it. Mortgage, home mortgage rates, 6.885% for a borrower with 700 credit, seven to 719, but the average American is 698. So you simply just bring it down to 680 to 699, it's 7.041% for the everyday American. Now, if you have incredible credit, you know, 760, 780, somewhere around there, you might get a five and a half to 6% rate, which, you know, many would say is great comparing to what it was 15 or 20 years ago. But the debt levels that everyday Americans have today is very different than what they were back then. Right now, what we are seeing is that a 7.04% credit score and a median priced home in America of 428,700, the monthly payment is $2,711 per month. That is, that's not cheap, that's a lot of money. The average rental in America is $2,011. So it still may be slightly better than renting if you factor the tax deductions and the benefits of home ownership, coupled with a lot of you know the upside, which is the long-term wealth that can be built out paying off your home. What we're seeing though is this credit score, or this mortgage rate rather, with a great credit score about eight months ago, the same home would have been $1,858 per month with a 2.96% mortgage rate, right? And so you're looking at almost at a, of a difference of about eight to $900 per month. But what is happening now in the housing market, in the real estate market, is we are starting to see a lot of buyers sit on the sidelines. We're seeing days on market increase with home sellers. We're seeing more and more price reductions. And we're seeing the stock market and a lot of markets simply pull back and they're looking around reassessing where we really are. Where are we really? The Fed is still feeling inflation. Its actions have not begun to dent inflationary pressures at all said Clifford Bennett of ACY Securities in a report, nor have they begun to crimp economic activity at all. The economic slowdown was already in play for other reasons. Well, Jerome Powell, this just came out about five days ago, Fed officials pledge more big rate hikes until there's meaningful decline in inflation, right? And as of now, they're also saying that markets now expect 50 basis point hike at September's meeting. But all this is happening all this is happening at a time when insurance rates are increasing, property taxes are increasing, and we're seeing mass layoffs. But this is also creeping up, which is very interesting. It's utility bills. A lot of people aren't thinking about this, but utility bills are likely going to be increasing in a very, very big way coming in the next three to four months, especially places like New York, New Jersey, you know, a lot of the colder locations, people are gonna be utilizing utilities even more, and they're gonna be hit with surprise bills. For example, Florida. Florida Power and Light raised its rates by 20 in 2022 by about $20 per 1,000 kilowatt hour, or about 18%. They increased it by 18%. In Pennsylvania, Philadelphia Inquirer, gasoline prices are down, but Pepco's electricity price is going up 11%. Utility bills in Los Angeles last July, electricity costs were 54.5% higher in LA compared to the nation. All right, so we're starting to see these you know, we're seeing homeowners getting hit by all directions right now, all directions. Americans are putting inflation on credit cards. So this is also gonna be a very, very big factor with people buying homes. It's gonna be the debt to income ratio. If they're making say $10,000 a month, but they have student loan debt, they have credit card debt, they have debts, it's gonna impact what they can actually afford as rates are rising and everything else is getting much more expensive more people are gonna be forced to rent. That's what's ultimately happening. But I think we're gonna be hit with a curveball here. And this curveball is gonna be people are gonna say, you know what, I'm not gonna do this. The people that are working you know, remote, they're gonna say, I'm not gonna do this. I'm gonna to move to other places. I'm gonna to move to Mexico. I'm gonna to move to uh, you know, Sicily. I'm gonna to move to Costa Rica. I'm gonna to move to different locations. I believe we're gonna to start to see so many people moving to other locations looking for alternative options where they can live a really good lifestyle, they can save money, they can get ahead, and they can do so and come back to America at a later point in time and buy a house when prices are you know, reflective of the risk that we're seeing right now in this market. I think we're gonna see a lot of people doing that. 
With that being said, today's paved sponsor is the solutionevent.com. They believe that we're going to see a lot of uncertainty in this economy, and we're going to see a lot of people leaving America, and they're buying places in Costa Rica, and they're getting ready for the Great Reset and a lot of this uncertainty. For more information, there's been a free event coming very, very soon at the solutionevent.com. And what I think is ultimately going to happen here, you have 10% of all applications right now for mortgages are adjustable, right? 10% are people taking on adjustable rate mortgages. What's fascinating here is that people are betting that things are going to, you know, go back to a 3% or 4% interest rate. And if they do not, and rates do in fact continue to climb, what's ultimately going to happen is we're going to see more and more people that are getting priced out of their home, right? This is going to be a very unique paradigm shift in the real estate market. We're seeing a lot of deep pocket investors waiting on the sidelines, paying attention to this. They love the fact that interest rates are rising. They love the fact that this uncertainty is coming. I believe this uncertainty is really going to give people a huge opportunity, especially, you know, renters, people that have some cash, some equity, a huge opportunity to get into the market and buy some incredible deals when people are afraid. You know, that old saying, you know, money is made when people are afraid. And, um, Rothschild said that the time to buy real estate, the time to invest, is when there's blood in the street, even if it's your own, right? And this is, in fact, what I think is going to happen. The last six months, people were paying 100K over asking, 200K over asking. They were paying whatever it took just to get into the deal. But what happens when, you know, the they're in these properties and they're losing their jobs and they are, you know, they're getting hit by, from all directions. People are going to be forced to sell. People that have the equity are going to be forced to sell. And the people that do not have the equity, well, you know, they're going to be forced to either give their properties back to the bank or, you know, potentially try to rent it out or find some other solution. The only real winners here are going to be the ones that are, are really conservative, right? Really conservative with the properties they're buying. They can afford the deal. They can afford it through the ups and the downs. In 2008, People were so scared about what the neighbor's prices were selling, what their homes were selling for, that they were, you know, they were selling their properties, they were getting up underneath them just in the panic because everyone else was panicking, right? I think that this panic is going to be something that, you know, will definitely have an impact across the uh, entire real estate market, the entire economy. I think we're going to see some really, really big changes coming. And uh, I think interest rates, people are not, they're not understanding where things are going to be going if they continue you know as Jerome Powell said that they are going to be you know hiking pledge more big hikes until there's a meaningful decline in inflation the Federal Reserve raised rates by 75 basis points in its last policy meeting in July the second such rate hike in as many months in an effort to bring down inflation which remains elevated and is yet to decline in a meaningful way while Fed officials have so far been adamant that they will keep raising interest rates until surging inflation is brought under control, investors are unsure how quickly the Fed will keep raising rates and for how long. Some experts have predicted that the central bank will slow or reverse the pace of rate increases by next year, driven by recent economic data showing that consumer prices cooled slightly in July, raising 8.5% on an annual basis, down from 9.1% in a prior month. Going into Wednesday, traders are almost evenly split on whether the Fed's Rate hike, another 75 basis point in September, will be opposed to an, another smaller 50 basis point increase. I think we're going to be seeing this. I think we're going to be seeing this in a very big way. I would, I would not be surprised if we see the next couple of Fed meetings bringing in 50 to 75 basis point hikes in each meeting. Participants judged that moving to a restrictive stance of policy was required to promote a maximum employment and price stability, according to the Fed minutes. Officials also agreed that as a stance of monetary policy tightening further, it is likely would become appropriate at some point to slow the, the pace of policy rate increases while assessing the effects of cumulative policy adjustments on economic activity and inflation. What do you think about this entire situation? Where do you see this all going? Do you think we're going to see interest rates increasing and increasing and increasing, forcing home sellers to bring their property prices down to a point where it's just going to make so much more sense to buy property, so much more sense to invest in real estate and lock in fixed rate debt. And then, you know, if rates do in fact go down, down the road, you can always refinance that property as long as you have enough equity in it, right? It's all about, you make the money on the buy. Right? And a lot of people are going to learn 
you know, especially over the last year or so that have bought real estate that, you know, just that is so true is you make the money on the buy. When you incorporate emotion into a real estate purchase and people just ignore the price paid, they just want the deal so bad, you know, there's, unfortunately, there's gonna be consequences to that, right? The smart and savvy investor always wins. What do you think about this? Drop your comments below, hit the like button, subscribe here and subscribe to my second channel. The interactive podcast is happening this week. I just posted my first video yesterday. Be sure to subscribe down there. I'm gonna leave links down below. And more information on the solutionevent.com. Today's paid sponsor, the solutionevent.com, is gonna be pinned at the top in today's comment. All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. And my LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, they're all up in the banner. Catch you guys later.